All right, welcome to an all new uh, episode of the Two Minute Drive podcast uh, with my co-host Robert Palace. How's it going, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. All right. So, um, week fourteen is week in the wrap. Oh, week fifteen. Week fifteen. Sorry about that. Yeah. Week fifteen is in the wraps. Um, some some interesting games. Um, real quick, I I just want to go. And it, we don't have to spend too much time, but on that Chargers and the Raiders game, like, what the F, man? Like, I thought it was going to be a shit-ass game, low scoring, maybe it's like some turnovers here and there. But the Raiders just like, man, I don't know what the hell. But you got your wish. I, I know I said in the in the group chat that we have you and I with, with Jake, and, mm-hmm. and you got your wish of, of that head coach finally getting freaking axed out. So real quick um, – what do you foresee in the future for the Chargers? What did you think about this game? I mean, I wouldn't have to go into much detail, but. Um, I didn't watch. I, I think I, I believe I was at work or I, I was doing something that I wasn't able to watch it. And I saw the score and it was just like, of course, right? Like this is exactly the type of game that would be like final for, for Staley to get the ax, which <laughs> finally they're like a year late on this. They should have axed him after blowing that playoffs lead last season against the Jaguars um but as far as like the future for this team um looks pretty bright I think they need to fix the defense a little bit I think offense I think they're still okay um I know they paid Eckler a little bit and he's still viable but there's been some injuries there and of course you have the quarterback Herbert um it's going to be a, a good job for 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 a head coach a good head coach and if you land that and you have the head coach and the quarterback, um, you're going to be in a good position. Um, do you think Kellen Moore played, you know, was his play calling not like effective or do you think it was because Herbert wasn't in the lineup? Well, I mean, there, there's a couple of factors, right? There's like injuries all over the place, including, you know, Herbert himself, his hand was injured at some point for, I, don't, I forgot how long. So, I mean, I guess I can give Kellen Moore a pass for this season. Maybe once they get the right coach or maybe if he gets the opportunity to do it, you know, we'll, we'll see what's what. I think that that'll be his real test. I think <clears throat> Staley was um, kind of like his Achilles just because the offense was able to put up points like early on in the season. It, it was just a defense that would blow these leads. And it's like Staley is a defensive coach. How could you not have that buttoned up with your – with your roster, especially with the guys that you have. So uh, I'm going to give him a pass. Uh, we'll see next season, unless he takes um, a head coaching job somewhere. I heard, I saw somewhere that he was rumored for the Carolina Panthers job, which is going to be another <laughs> head coaching. I mean, there's going to be plenty yeah. of head coaching vacancies, right. but that was, a, that was a, a job that was possibly one for him to go seek out, but who knows? I think this guy wants to be a coach, but I don't know. Well, the defense, I mean, you just mentioned it right now on defense. They have, you know, Derwin James. They had Asante Samuel Jr. They have um, Bosa. They had uh, Khalil Mack. You know, all these guys, right? Um, is it the players, Robert, or is it the defense, the D coordinator? I mean, was it just all – everything in playing factors into that one? I mean, because this defense is it is was an expensive defense, and then look at the outcomes. I mean, they're getting blown out. Um, I, I think it's like me, you know, they, they gave up on that coach. <laughs> I, I think that's probably has a lot to do with it and okay. they, they need a culture change in there. They need someone like, a. I think the ownership was saying that they, they've got interest in Jim Harbaugh, somebody like tough nose. That's going to bring like a very, you know, just rough grinded out scrappy type of culture. It's going to make everybody earn it. Um, I think that's what they need there. So, but yeah, as far as like defensive players, I think most of it was just quitting on Staley. You could just tell. And let me, this let me, yeah, go ahead. Let me, let me ask you something. This is something that I've never asked. This is something that we've never really talked about on our show. Um, college coaches transitioning from college to the NFL. We've seen it happen. We've seen some success like Pete Carroll. And then we see some like uh, Matt Rule you know, getting this massive contract and then in Carolina and then that just folding within a year. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think we had another one in Jacksonville, right? Who, uh, Meyer, Urban Meyer. Yeah. You know, that one with his scandal that happened there and then that folded. And then, you know, he, what do you, so I'm trying to think of how to, how to ask you this to get your opinion on it, but the transition from college to NFL is way different, right? Because it's a lot more of a challenge. It's a, it's a, it's a bigger challenge in the NFL, right? Because now you're with the big boys. These are people, these are, these are college students that turn into men, right? Eventually. Mm -hmm. So why do you, why is it that in college, you know, transitioning over to NFL with some of the college coaches, they fail. And then when they go back to college, they are, you know, like, it's just like, they're, they're freaking unbeatable. Like, um, Saban, when mm. he went over to Miami and man, mm. he, he only lasted like, a, a, what, not even a few games. Right. I think it was yeah. like five or six and they fired him. And then that's when he got into, I think it was LSU or Bama, one of those, but why do you think that happens? You know, and I know you you just, and the reason why I'm asking you is because you said about, you know, Jim Harbaugh, I know in the past Lincoln Riley was tied to the Cowboys as well, but that never happened. <laughs> um, so well, I want, I want your input on that. Well, I think it depends on who it is. The only reason I'm saying Jim Harbaugh is because he's done it and he also went to a Super Bowl. So he's proven that he can work both sides of the spectrum in college and in the pros. Like I wouldn't even throw out other names like a Lincoln Riley or, you know, whoever. <laughs> I mean, I know Chip right. Kelly for a while was doing it in Philadelphia. Um, he was kind of innovative there. I think that's what you have to be. You have to either have a strong culture, someone like who's thick skin, like, like, uh, like Jim Harbaugh. Or you got to be like creative on the offensive side of the ball, which is where things are headed, which I think would actually benefit college coaches if they now try to transition more into the NFL. I think they would have an easier time because it's more like their game now, a bunch of like right. high scoring and all that stuff. Everything's all mm-hmm. fast and RPOs, all this stuff. I think right. back in the day when it was more of a defensive league and you had to kind of play chess, and Brady has mentioned this, and this is the whole thing about why you think play has gone downhill is that there's no more like chess anymore it's everybody's mm. playing checkers it's all score 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 there's no like no nobody trying to figure each other out so i think it would be easier now for college coaches but that doesn't mean that they would all be a success but right. like i said Harbaugh's the only one that comes to mind that i would consider yeah. for an nfl job right now okay um all right so so enough on that raiders one that was you know mm. we know that's not going to happen going on uh um another game um real quick i told you i don't want to talk about it but just real quick um how about them cowboys the fall the fall fall of the cowboys the rise of the bills are you you changing your tune on that are you starting to believe a little bit uh, you know maybe hey hey man sometimes teams just get hot and then Right. We've seen it. We've seen this so many times in the NFL. The Giants did it twice and they and I and I felt the end of it with the Super Bowl. So don't tell me that it can't be done where a team gets hot at the end. And no. Makes, yeah. Uh, that, and, and I think that's what's happening with the Bills right now. But look, man, like, OK, I know you give me shit all the time. Jake gives me shit all the time, but I'm not a homer for the Cowboys. I'm not. And you know this. Mm-hmm. Um I just, I want to be realist because I don't want to be that fan where it's just like, oh, this is our year or like Jake, all the refs, or it was too cold for them over there. So they couldn't really, or they didn't feel like it. Yeah. Or, or, or he said, oh, this fits into my narrative of them going 11 and six, fuck out of here. So, (laughs) um, I watched this game and, and I told you this already before that you were right about Micah Parsons were, you know, and then look real quick, I read that 14, uh, cowboy players, starters were sick dealing with stomach problems. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to hear that shit. You know, um, but Micah Parsons, you know, early in, early on in the game, I, you know, I saw him on the sidelines. He had that stupid face on him where he was just like, you know, hmm, you know, like whatever. And um, I, I don't know. I, I feel like the real, like, I felt like I was, it was fool's gold with Dak, you know, like I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this guy is top five quarterback. He's in the MVP talks. He's playing really well. And then here we are. Like I opened that freaking chocolate covered wrapper and I got freaking shit ass. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I don't know, Robert, I, am I wrong? Or is this, was this, is this Bill's team 
that heated up because of the late in the season that, you know, it was, it was, it was going to be an obstacle and they, and the Cowboys obviously didn't overcome that. Well, I mean, the Bills had their backs against the wall. Well, basically for the rest of the season, they have their backs against the wall. Like they have to win out, but plus they need help. So they were just like that animal that you got cornered and they, they have no choice but to be relentless and, and, and win out and even blow you out if they have to. But on the Cowboys side of things, it's like, man, like you're, you're rolling and all this yeah. stuff. And, you know, you, you finally beat the Eagles last week. And it's not like you've right. been on a stretch of so many games like they were. Like, you can kind of like, I don't want to say make excuses for the Eagles, but at least there's a reason why they're struggling a little bit because they had that hard stretch of games. But the Cowboys, right. like, this is your chance to continue to prove like, hey, like, this isn't the Cowboys of old. And mm-hmm. like, they just, I don't know what it, what it was. It's like either either they're they're only good against those the the nothing teams where they look like, a freaking Hall of Fame roster all the way around, or they play these teams like the Niners and now the Bills, and they get slapped back to reality. Like it is what it is. Um, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tell you. I think you. I I believe you said this. Uh, I might have to go back to the episode. I think it was like two episodes. I think it was leading up to that Cowboys versus uh, Eagles game when uh-huh. they when the Eagles had that short week because they had just right. played on that Thursday game. I yeah. think it was the Niners, right? Yeah. Anyway, um. I think the Cowboys squeaked by on that game because they caught the Eagles like on not enough rest, not enough time to prepare. Yeah. Um, I could be wrong. I might get a lot of bash for this from Cowboys who listen to this pod, but I'm going to just say, because I think that's how it happened because other than that, I mean, that Seahawks and the Eagles game, you know, I think that Cowboys lost kind of traveled with the Eagles. Mm -hmm. And I mean, on this point, I mean, you know, like on Bradbury, he was getting burned. He got burned. um, Especially with that, with that 90 yard drive that they did. Um, but going back to this Cowboys game, um, to be honest with you, Robert, I mean, yeah, okay. We, we clinched the playoffs. Who gives a shit, but you always say it all the time. Like it matters, you know, getting past that first round, um, you know, okay. So maybe we get past the first round, but you know, we're going to have to face either the Niners or the Eagles again. Mm. And if it's the Niners, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know if they can even overcome that because it's just, the Niners is too much firepower and the defense as well. And it's just look at what, and then the bills had some of the main starters out on defense and Dak couldn't move the ball. Yeah. Um, our defense was supposed to be a top five on stopping the run and James cook, Jesus, he was just freaking balling out. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know, Robert. I mean, I, I, I got to see what happens in the stretch. Uh, for the remaining season and then who we face in the first round. I mean, I saw on there that it looked like if the playoffs started, we'd face the Rams. It looked Correct. like if we, if, yeah. So, um, I mean, we don't even want to count them out because I mean, Stafford's still no joke, you know? Yeah. So um, I don't, I don't know, Robert, uh, I don't want to go too much into this. I just, <laughs> I just, I don't know, man, the Cowboys, like, I'm just like, now I'm just like, well, shit. Now I'm kind of second guessing, like, is this, you know, can they do it? I just kind of wish I wish Jake was here for this episode who's out with like a kidney stones this week. Um, (laughs) I I just wish he was here to see like what explanation he has, because I don't want to hear they didn't feel like it. I don't want to hear this loss doesn't mean anything. I don't want to hear like, oh, it's only, you know, they're still in first because the Eagles lost. Like, no, like you should be winning these games. If you're as good as you say you are, you should be handling this division. This this was your, your chance to take a stranglehold on it and with the Eagles stumbling and now you're still in a tight race. Even let's say the Eagles went out, it's still like their division to lose. Like Cowboys, even if they went out, I read an article on Pro Football Talk. If they both went out, like the Eagles will win the division based on the strength of victories. So right. the Cowboys they they just they they with the bed. Like I mean, I'm <laughs> I don't I don't know, man. Like yeah. and I got and like I told Jake. I said these stretch of games were going to be the test. Like the first one, Philly, cool, but let's see if you could do it against other teams. And right away, blasted by the Bills. Now you got the uh, the Dolphins and the Lions back to back. Two high, other high powered offenses, and we're going to see what this Dallas defense is really made of. Because if I mean the Cowboys can put up points, but so can the Dolphins. And we saw the Dolphins do it without Tyreek Hill. They put up thirty on. They I mean, put up I know thirty, it's the Jets, man. I know it's the Jets, but. Without Tyreek Hill, 30 points. And then the Lions' backs against the wall were getting, like, you know, they got tired of getting shit on these last two weeks. 
and they blasted the Broncos, like put up put up forty plus. So yeah. we're gonna see what's what. So well, and 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 that's because the Jets defense, the secondary is ranked one, mm. first in the league. You know, so I mean, with with how and Waddle balled out on that game as well, yeah. and Mostert. So I, I don't know, but anyway, um, that's a kind of a. I don't know if you have any other games that you want to recap. Uh, I want to give a shout out only because they're not gonna be on my top five power rankings, but they deserved it. But I didn't want to deal with the backlash online. Shout out to Baker Mayfield, man. Freaking perfect passer rating. The second, I think it was like, the, oh no, the first opposing quarterback to ever do that in Lambeau. And man, the Bucks played really, really good football. Finally, a great offensive game plan from Dave Canales, who I was very critical of these last couple of weeks, especially with him trying to get the run going. But man, Baker, if this offense plays like this going out, I mean, I don't, I still kind of have questions about the defense because um, right. they, they can get scored on, but if this offense plays like this, I think they can play with anybody. And if the defense yeah. defensive line can just put a little bit of pressure, I think this Bucks team could maybe win one playoff game. I'll, yeah. I'll give them that much. But, man, shout out to Baker. Played Poss- really well. Got to give him his props. Possibly. Yeah, Godwin Balldale too. Finally. Yeah. And then, yeah. of course, Evan scored. I mean, they just got to keep it rolling. I just want – give me consistency for these last three weeks with the Bucks. And, I mean, I, obviously they're my team. I'm going to root for them. But – you know, this this Bucks team kind of reminded me of like when Brady and them started clicking and they figured it out. So I'm like, oh man, if you know, stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Jake asked me the other night on our on our group chat, and he was all like, "Yeah, Abe, are you still not scared of 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 the Bucks with Baker?" Yeah, and but I said, but he but he said that not he doesn't watch. I know he doesn't watch them. He, he doesn't he, he does, know anything about look, the Bucks. Look, look, folks. No, no disrespect to you, Robert. I know this is your team, mm-hmm. and for the Buck fans out there, they do not scare me. No. Tom Brady, Tom Brady with Tom Brady, yes, because yes. I, I've said this many times. Tom Brady can have the freaking towel girl out there, and he'll make her look like a freaking pro, pro bowler. Yeah. So I, I don't know. They don't scare me. If they had Tom Brady and Gronk again, yes, they possibly, yeah, because mm-hmm. I mean Tom Brady can do whatever. Um, but um, I want to throw this out there, Robert. I mean, it's something to think about. I know you. I know you and I were talking about Vegas going next year, but I've I haven't been. It's been a while since I've been to the great state of Florida. I love it out there, and I I, I think maybe you and I should do this. Uh, do a Tampa game. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. I mean, I do like a, a Palace and and a road trip, man. Are you talking uh, about maybe. like next season? Next season, yeah, of course. Okay. Next season, that, that way we can I'd save up and. Uh, maybe I don't know, man. Like, I, I Florida is a great state, big, oh, yeah, a great it. state, and and I've I, it's been a while since I've been there. You know, I went to Orlando and I watched I watched the Rangers play there when they went Tampa Bay and all that. But anyway, uh, maybe we can talk about that and, and plan that. I mean, that'd be great, something to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but, especially uh, if even, they keep, especially if they keep Baker around because I I've really enjoyed watching him play, and I think they just need to unleash him a little bit more. Oh yeah, hell yeah, definitely. So I mean, that's something that we can uh, discuss uh, in the off season. But um, yeah. other than other than that, I don't really have any other games that I kind of want to. Oh wait, wait, we don't, and we don't have to talk much about this. I just I just want to say it on the air because I, I don't I can't stand this motherfucker. Um, Giants, the the freaking Danny DeVito oh, Tommy, saga. Tommy DeVito. Tommy Tommy DeVito. Man, I I didn't watch the game. But I was watching highlights, and and they were just you know tormenting that that quarterback like they freaking knocked him around. And um, I know I said on the chat that that the, his agent upped the charge like to twenty k for some pizzeria place to do like some signing and and photos. But he oh. ended up, but Tommy ended up going mm. and and doing it. But he didn't do it for that amount. But anyway, what now? Do you think this guy's stock has fallen? Yeah, I told you he only had his fifteen minutes of fame, and it was gonna it wasn't gonna last long. Like that's all it is, and he was capitalizing on it. And 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 this guy walked. You know, look, man. Like I, I get it. You're in the NFL. If I was in the NFL, I probably would walk that way. But this motherfucker walked like he was cocky and and like he was a freaking pro bowler. Like fuck out of here. He's a fugazi. Anyway, it's it's a I gimmick. Wanted, it's all it's a gimmick. I I just wanted to freaking um, point that out to because like he got his he got freaking winded. But anyway. All right, so that's enough of week 15 in the NFL. 
Um, we are heading into week 16 now. So uh, Robert and I will go ahead. We're going to start with the power rankings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Robert, I think Robert yours and I are kind of maybe similar. Yeah. Like uh, I said, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're really paying attention to what's going on, our, our power rankings mm-hmm. should start to really be similar. And I mean this, even with the audience, if you're paying attention and doing your own rankings, they should really start to be similar because we're heading down the stretch and we're starting to see like who are the like the actual teams that are going to end up in the in the playoffs. So yeah, our power uh, ranking should be similar. I also want to want to point out there that that you know um, that Robert and I we don't we don't call each other and say hey we're going to do this or whatever on the on our top five. And we sure as hell don't have the Cowboys on ours for this week because they don't <laughs> fucking deserve it. Doesn't matter what the situation may be. Uh, I know, I know. Jake's excuse was, "Oh, they they they're still a power ranking team." Like, no, they're not. They they got their asses handed to. Uh, that being at least said, not the, Robert, at least not the way we do it. Yeah, right. Exactly. So that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna start us off with our with the number five. Okay. Uh, and of, and of course, I'm gonna go with the team that dethroned the Cowboys from number one, the Bills. I, mm-hmm. I had to put them back on number five. Um, with them beating the Chiefs. You know, and then now with them also taking out and dominating the Cowboys, no choice but to put them at number five, at least for now. What's the ranking for the Cowboys defense? Do you know offhand, like just overall? The Well, the ranking, would they were fifth. They were fifth okay. in the NFL. All right. So <laughs> it's not like the Bills just beat up any defense. So no. uh, and, and just to go with you, they're also my number five. Again, you mentioned the the big wins against the Chiefs. And the Cowboys, and they're just surging. And I know, I mean, a lot has to go their way for them to make the playoffs. But right now, like, if they get in, like, that's the one team you don't want to face. <laughs> Especially, like, even if they're on the road. Like, I don't, I think they, and you mentioned it earlier in your recap, uh, James Cook. And yeah. I, that guy found a way to start running the ball. And I, that's also a way to kind of wear down these Cowboys. And my dad has mentioned this, and I, I believe him, and I've never really looked at it but like and maybe i don't know if you agree with him but micah parsons it looks like if he doesn't get his like mauling over you like you can easily just like Mm -hmm. make him a non-factor by running the ball to the other side and he just doesn't get what he wants and that's why he pouts so right where where else is he effective on the defense other than just coming at you straight on and you know mauling you for a sack other than that like what what else can he contribute and i'm not saying he's not a good player but i'm just saying like he has like one strength and then if you can easily make him a non-factor right yeah i i agree with that um i don't know i i really don't like the fact that they have micah coming off the edge i think they should have just left him at his original position which is linebacker um i think that might have something to do with it i don't know i mean it's it's effective sometimes but i mean of course on this game it wasn't effective at all I mean, I'm sure if I'm sure he's done it, but I've never seen him tackle like in the backfield or anything like that. It's like no, if he doesn't yeah. get a sack or anything, like it's just him running after the quarterback or or whoever. Uh, I I almost I almost feel like he's I don't know if you remember the movie Re- the replacements with Keanu Reeves. Yeah, you you remember the guy? I don't remember his name, but he's the one that directed like the Iron Man and all that. Oh, John Favreau. Death. Yeah, yeah, John Favreau. Like he's the one where he's like, where and the guys like art art whatever the or the, the defensive guy's like give me the ball i want that ball and he's like yeah. okay and then he goes and he's only focused on getting that ball right that's exactly like that's, my, a, that's yeah. exactly what my dad says about micah and it's like yeah. it's true yeah so yeah, yeah he kind of reminds me of that player in, in that movie where he's just like focusing on trying to just get to the quarterback and not worried about what's going on over here yeah, on, yeah, on yeah. the back yeah so yeah yeah i think he needs to evolve his game a little bit especially if he wants to like I know he's already talking about Hall of Fame, and he also ran his mouth about Super Bowl, so he's got to own up to that too. And I know he was on his podcast this week, like blaming the media and all this stuff. Like, yeah, hey man, you also ran your mouth. Like, just if I were him, I wouldn't even have that podcast. Like during the season, I would do it like off season or something like that. But not, not while you're playing, man. It's just it's gonna make you look bad, especially when you guys wet the bed like they like they did this past weekend. Um, yeah. All right, that's well, that's it. But Bills are back on there. Uh, we'll see if they make a run. Yeah, so that's our, our number five. Um, you want to go ahead and hit us off with your number four? My number four is also a team that's returning onto my ranking just because, you know, this – and I, I, I put them back on here because it was this was going to be my last time picking them if they had lost. But they pulled out 
off the win against the Broncos, the Detroit Lions at number four. Uh, nice. Definitely Denver was a little bit of a hot team going in for a little bit. Everybody was talking about like, oh, Denver could win out and make the playoffs and still kind of be up for grabs for the AFC West. But Detroit really put that hammer down and Dan Campbell got this team rolling again. And if they can put up offense like this, like they're going to be a team that you also don't want to play and they'll have a home game at the playoffs. So, right. and and the Cowboys would have to travel. if They end up going on the road. They would go to Detroit. And I don't know if I would favor the Cowboys in a matchup like that, but for yeah. this week, Lions number four for me. Um, for me, for my number four, I have the Dolphins on there. Um, I know they played the Jets, but I mean, the Jets defense isn't that it's not bad at all. I think they're ranked one. I think I told you their secondary is ranked one against the pass and all that. But the fact yeah. that Tua balled out with Waddle and then Mostert as well. So, I mean, without the, without Hill, Tyreek Hill, I mean, that was, um, that was good. So, I mean, I, I think the Dolphins are going to start to trend up going towards and in, going into the playoffs. So um, I have the Dolphins at four. Um, I have them at three, just to, I'm oh, sorry to go again, but I just wanted to piggyback. Yeah, that's fine. You have them at four. I have them at three S- solely because <clears throat> Tyreek wasn't in that game. And the whole thing was like, oh, you take Tyreek out and this team is like completely different, which they right. did show against the week before. Um, who was it? Who did they play? Was it, or they just couldn't finish out the game. Which week? Was it, the, was it the Titans where they lost? Yeah, because Will Levis had that game. Uh, the game. Oh that was yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yes. but they they proved it here. They they could do it without Tyreek, and uh, now if they get him back, and then they start rolling again. Like I said, they could. It's all about. It's not always about what your record is in the season. It's about like how you're playing at the end of the season. Like, are you hot? Are right. you rolling? Because that could momentum you all the way to the Super Bowl. Um. Miami number Definitely. three for me. Um, for number three, it was it was a toss up between the Lions um, and and I picked the Chiefs. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, Mahomes is still. I know he had a, he got a little upset because of uh, Kadarius Tony. Tony. Yeah, he's <laughs> and um, but I, I got I have the Chiefs there. Um, we'll see what happens there. I I still think. Do you that have them there? Do you have them there based on reputation or? Do you like anything that you're seeing from them? Like, you know what, Robert? It, I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm not going to be freaking biased like some people, but um, it's reputation. Uh-huh. Um, because honestly, you know, they're you know Kelsey's getting taken out of the game. You know, they're not really you know they're they're I think they're double teaming him, and he really doesn't. I mean, I think uh, what is it, Clyde's uh, Clyde Edwards or something Hilaire. like that? Yeah, that guy freaking. He balled out. I mean, I was surprised they benched him. I mean, but Pacheco's a, b- a better player. But now you get Pacheco back, right? So uh, maybe they'll utilize both of them now. Who knows? I don't know because I know uh, Clyde Delaire had a good game on the receiving end, mm-hmm. um, and then because you have him on fantasy, and I saw that. So um, it's more reputation. But if if they lose again, or if they lose this week, then I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I gotta go. It's it's based off reputation. Okay. Um, um you wanna you wanna go number oh I can go number two. Good. Yeah, I'm gonna my number two is the Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens. Um Lamar Jackson, you know, he's 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 doing it. Gus Gus Edwards. Is he your MVP um, right now or did you have Dak or somebody else? Well, well I mean he's, well, no, no, I'm, he's I'm not, I know, but who do you who did you have? Before Sunday passed, who did you have in your leaderboard for MVP? It was it was it was Lamar, Brock, and then Dak. Uh huh. Um, not so sure about Dak now, but I think now it's going to be like between Lamar and Brock, and and maybe you might question me on the Brock one, but I'm not. I mean, know, I like him, but I'm I'm yeah. just saying like there's. Are are you factoring in? Do you factor in a McCaffrey, a Tyree Kill? Do you give those guys a chance, or do you think they're just going to straight up give it to a quarterback? Tyree Kill, man, he's. I think they're going to well, give think, it to a quarterback. I think they're going to yeah. give it to a quarterback. I think what hurt Tyreek's case was the the them putting up thirty on the Jets without him. So well, had yeah, they not exactly. had they struggled two times in a row, 
you would have been like Tyreek's the reason why the but, Dolphins are that explosive. But correct me if I'm wrong, Robert. I mean, when and I, I, if Jake was here, he probably would give me shit. But when Brock Brock Purdy didn't have Debo for a couple of games, um, I think McCaffrey was in and out of, on a game. He was, he was banged, in and out. He was banged up. Yeah. They still won. He still found ways to win. So um, I, I, I got to put him in that category. He's got to be number two for me on that list behind Lamar Jackson. Okay, so you have Lamar as the front runner right now. Then. I have him as a front runner right now. What if they What if they lose Sunday to the Niners? What if let's say they lose bad? Do you jump Brock back up there or one of the Niners? It, it'd be either him or McCaffrey for me. It it's got to be it's at that point now. If if they if they if the Ravens lose, then at that point it's going to have to be McCaffrey or or Purdy, yeah. because um, I mean like I'm saying Mc, Purdy's getting the ball to Ayuk and Debo and and Kittle, also mm-hmm. McCaffrey. But McCaffrey's making moves even when he's not catching the ball. He's and running. He's, like, he's making. And he's like breaking records for like a running back because I was wa- watching a lot of Colin this weekend. You know, yeah. he's he's doing stuff like that running backs don't really get the attention for. And it's like he said it's going to be like a crazy stat year for him if he doesn't get the MVP. And then you look back years later and you'll be like, man, like, how did they not give the MVP to Purdy or sorry, McCaffrey that year to McCaffrey? So if if uh, Miami balls out with Hill, like if Hill has a hell of a game, I mean, do you do you think he gets back or put back into that category? Uh, I mean, sure, he can be in the conversation, but I think his stock but really dropped after that Jets game. That one game, right? Okay. Who do you who do you got your number two? Uh, I also have the Ravens as well, the number one seed in the AFC. I mean, they're in the driver's seat right now. Uh, depending how it goes with the Niners, like if they if they're able to upset the Niners, then we really got to look at Baltimore as possibly uh, being like a Super Bowl favorite. So they, yeah, I know everyone's saying like even I've said like all oh, the Chiefs are somehow going to find a way to get in there. Like, no, they're going to have to go to Baltimore. I just don't think they'll be able to match up well in that right. environment for Mahomes. All right, uh, you want to you want to hit us off with your number one? Yes, and of course, uh, my number one is the San Francisco 49ers just continuing to pummel teams. And see, this is where I wish D- Dallas, if they're going to prove to be the team that they claim that they think they are, and what Jake thinks they are. Like they should be pummeling these teams like that they play, mm-hmm. which they do, but they, they also need to pummel the good teams. <laughs> and the Cowboys lost to the Cardinals, so <laughs> Yeah. Um real real quick, Robert. Um, I think Jake said this before that the Cowboys don't have weapons. They have weapons, they have <laughs> players. Um, if you take Dak out of the quarterback position and put Brock, um um, let me see Lamar or um, Baker, even Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Any of these guys, uh, shit, why not for shits and giggles? Uh, Love, Jordan Love, those four, any of those four on the quarter uh, to, to be the quarterback of the Cowboys, different outcome or same thing? As far um, as like, as far as like record and playing. I think it, it all, it depends on like decision-making, like, Brock Purdy, you can give him all the shit you want. Like, oh, he's got all these players, but your quarterback also has to make the throws, and he's he's making like incredible throws. So I think, you know, he'd be able to find Ferguson and and Cooks and and Gallup and and Ceedee Lamb. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I definitely don't wouldn't see that much of a drop off in the team if you take Dak out of the equation. And we've seen it done. So that this is why um, Dak doesn't get my MVP vote. And I know it's last season, but we've seen this team with this kind of like similar type of roster uh, go yeah. on a winning streak and more than five games. So, um, yeah. if they if they had Lamar Jackson as their quarterback, Jesus, I mean, he does it right now. Even without you know, I mean, he's got OBJ, but OBJ is not the OBJ of the Giants era. Right. But you know, with the receivers here, I mean, do you think? Would you see them be like, you know, or go like, I don't know, maybe like 15 and one or 15 and two or, or like a 13 and like four or whatever, you know? I could see it because it would definitely be a different type of team. They wouldn't be like, they, I think they'd be more of like, um, 
clock control, like where they'd be running yeah. and then Lamar would be running and then the defense would just take care of the rest for you and they wouldn't have to be like this explosive offense. So, yeah, definitely I could see it. They'd be, well, be kind of like the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, well, because defenses have to prepare because they're going to be like, well, shoot, you know, Lamar can run it, but at the same time, Lamar's got an arm on him. So it's mm-hmm. like, who do we, who are we going to focus on more? Yeah. And also in this Bills game, I don't know if you, well, if you didn't watch it, but they, they were, they were uh, making, they were forcing Dak to throw because they yeah. know Dak doesn't have that arm strength, and they know that if they pressure him enough, he's going to make stupid decisions. Um, well, that and did. That, well, that and what I'm waiting for with the Cowboys is how do how do they deal with adversity? Can you come from behind? And yeah. if you had Lamar on the Cowboys, like we've seen him in the past, he can make comebacks and yeah. make oh, spectacular yeah. plays. Like I have yet to see that from Prescott and anybody else, or even the Cowboys defense, like making a stop, like, like where they could make the comeback. But and that's yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's going to be the team's Achilles. Is if you end up playing a San Francisco, a Philly, even a Detroit, I would say, and if they get up like you know two three scores on you like can you come back can you tie it up i don't know yeah uh so i don't know anyway um my number one as well is going to be the niners i've already said this plenty of times that 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 offense is is too much um the defense um the defense is is also you know can give you some problems with with bosa and and with chase young um on both ends so yeah i just it's too much right now robert um, yeah. I don't know when I, when I saw the Niners and the Seahawks, you know, in the beginning, it looked like they were like kind of like neck and neck, like scored. But then after that, the game just freaking the Niners just took off after that. And it was too much for Seattle. And I don't know if you saw on that game, but there was a couple of fights that broke up because I mean, Seattle was just getting frustrated. Yeah. I've, I've said this and I've said this to my friends who are Niners fans. I was like, if y'all don't do it this year, then there ain't going to be no other year that you're going to do it because the only thing that will derail them is if somebody goes out. And yeah. I think for a series or two, wasn't Brock Purdy get knocked out of the game for a little bit and then he came back in? Yeah, he was so coming back that's, in. I think if they lock up the number one seed, I think they should rest players just because I, when healthy, and I think the record is like 18-0 and 0 when Purdy, Debo, and McCaffrey are all in the game. So right. They're locked. So if they get the if they lock in the number one seed, like let's say next week or the week or I know there's only three weeks left, I think. Let's yep. say that they lock it up next week. Bench everybody, like or bench whoever. Save yeah, you your save it. your strong guys. All right. Well, that wraps up our top five power rankings for this week. Um, good job, uh, Robert. And then uh I didn't even want to say I don't even have Jake's, but I don't even want to say it because I know you had the Cowboys at number five, but um <laughs> Let's roll into our um, weekly picks. Yep. And uh, here, I, I know you're going to make excuses because this is what you do because you because you know I'm showing you out. What do you mean? What anyway, excuses? I'm going to uh, own it. No, no, no. Because you're going to say, "Oh, well, you're just playing conservative." No, 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 no. It's not conservative. It's being a good, a nah. good. You're nah, conservative, nah, nah. but it's okay. Uh, you know what? No. So I went twelve and four. Man, uh-huh. amazing. Robert went eight and eight. Jake went 97 and uh, Steven went 88. So for the season, I am at 132 and 76. Robert, you're at 123 and 85. Jake's at 113 and 92. And then with our special guest combined, it's 51 and 35. 51, 35. So uh, what, what was I your record again? Mine's 132 and 76. I'm not that far behind. So you're nine, you're nine games, nine games. Okay. But you know, it was it was five last week. Now I'm I jumped up four more. So I'm it's it's kind of I... harder in the last couple of weeks because now we know who the real teams are. It's 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 easier to get a or it's better to get a lead up in the early part of the season. So that's where you can take chances. But towards the end, you have to kind of like go with the better teams, unless like you have a narrative. So yeah, that's not not bad for a special guest though. They're at fifty one and thirty five. Yeah. The above 500. So. Yeah. Um, we'll see about that. Um, real, real quick, Robert, before I hand it over to you for the, uh, for the matchups, uh, just real quick. I know this season we kind of went away talking about fantasy, but since you and I are in the playoffs, right. Um, I, I lost the first, the first week of it. And <laughs> I know you, I saw your post 
And I was like, what the hell is Robert talking about? And then you're like, oh, we still got another week. And I was like, yeah, it's That's so dumb. Weeks, man. Was it always like that? <laughs> yes. It's always well, been like that. I just, I don't remember. And I know we played each other in the Super Bowl last year, but I just don't remember that going into the playoffs. Yeah. That it was like a, a two week thing, but it's, it's, it's two week right now. I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. Um, I, my team freaking bombed. So I'm, I'm really, the fans are rooting for, for a rematch of last year's Super Bowl of, mm. of Brady and Manny. Mm. And hopefully we'll, we'll get that again. I mean, we'll see what happens, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, just 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 real quick, folks. You know, Robert and I in, in our league, the Expandables League, uh, we're we're in the playoffs, uh, so uh, we're hoping to get a, a rematch of of last year's Super Bowl. That one was was a good one. That was a good one. I think uh, who, somebody screwed you over though. I think it was uh, the Rams played spoiler to you, right? I think it was Aaron Rodgers. Something Rogers. like that. Yeah, but I think that. I was just gonna say for this week's matchup, when I thought I had it won, I was like, ah, oh, I won by twenty three. Like I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to the Super Bowl. Uh, I guess the only upside for me right now is that I do have a, a a little bit of a leeway with the lead, and I'm only I mean I'm favored by 20 to win it all to get get back to the Super Bowl. But um, right. I made like one or two move final moves. Uh, I think I, I went in on a different kicker and I saw Robert. I'm, I'm still I'm still I'm still struggling between Minshew and Stafford. I dropped Dobbs. You were right on that one. Whatever. I whiffed. No big deal. Um, <laughs> But am I gonna am I gonna win that wager? I th- it looks like I am. What's the wager? Oh, by the it's way, the, speaking of, because I don't even think we brought it up on last week's episode, but whatever. you lost the wager to me with the split of the Eagles and the yeah. We, no, we, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. Did we? Gatorade. Yeah. Oh no, but you were supposed to eat crow on the pod. That's all right. I'll save oh. it. I'm gonna save. <laughs> you're supposed to open up the show eating crow. It's okay. <laughs> I'm I'm up like two wagers on you. So, um. That's fine. That's fine. I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll get this one. I know I'm going to get this one for uh for I wager on the. Uh, I hope you wrote Vikings. it down because I don't remember. Yeah, I wrote it down. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find it real quick. Um. Yeah, I wager was. Oh, oh was it like Minnesota making the playoffs is. or something? Like yeah. That? So it's for a still book movie. So yeah. So it was a. Uh... If I win, it was, it was if, if the Vikings make the playoffs, I get the steel book, right? And then if if the Vikings miss the playoffs, I get a steel book. I mean, they're they're still and, not out of it. I mean, Nick Mullins, you know, you never know. Yeah, uh, and the way this you got your, going. then you got your wager with uh with Jake too on wing stop. So yeah, I'm probably gonna end up. Blue, I mean, Trevor Lawrence is um kind of been disappointing this season. Uh, stats no, 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 wise. no, no, no. The, yours, yours is a. The Texans making the playoffs. Oh, we have that wager too. Well, I know. The, I know yeah, our you, big one. Our big one is the, the Trevor Dak uh, stats, yeah. but Dak's blowing Trevor out of the water. Yeah, but you got another one with Jake with uh, Texans making the. You got Texans making the playoffs. He has Texans missing the playoffs. <sighs> I might lose. Wager both on of these. that one is Wink Stop. Yeah, I Wink might lose Stop. both Damn. of these. Well, it would be the only time Jake's ever won anything against me because. Other than that, he doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> he can't debate me. Uh, he can't. He just can never beat me, except for flukes like this that happen. Uh, Jacob, did you uh, were you wanting to say something before I did the wager? Um, no, just that I was. I mean, we we're still sticking with the fantasy topic. I oh I'm yeah, favored. I'm favored by twenty this week, so we'll see if that'll be enough to get me back to the Super Bowl. Are Are you yeah. favored? Are you? No, I'm projected to lose by nine. That's a gonna that might end up being being a nail biter. So yeah, the the AFC Championship game will be the early game. The NFC title game will be the late game. So we're gonna have to wait and see like <laughs> what happens. Oh man, I'm I'm yeah. I I really wanted my kicker to come through. I needed, and you know what? There was a there was a kicker that did, I think, 17 points, and I can't remember which kicker. I think it, it was Houston's have been the Raiders. Kicker. Wasn't it the Raiders? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I think it was Houston's kicker that got oh, okay. 17, and that would have that would have put me that would have put me up like by like two or three. Mm-hmm. That, but either yeah, way, it wouldn't have mattered because it wasn't a one-off game. It didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> so you're still in like, it. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. You're I don't about. know. We'll see. We'll see. My my team took a. I don't know, man. We'll see. But I'm. I'm riding on the hopes of uh, Jordan Love. Okay. 
Uh, you ready for week 16? Yeah, let's let's get into it. All right, we have our games of the week, so we'll leave those for the end. Um, we got games all over this weekend, this holiday, Christmas weekend, depending on what you're doing, folks. So we'll see if uh, you'll have time for that football or if you're traveling. We'll see what's what. Anyways, we're going to start with our first game, which is tomorrow on Amazon Prime. It's the 7-7 seven and seven New Orleans Saints traveling to face the 7-7 seven and seven Los Angeles Rams. Both teams still in position for the playoffs. Uh, Abe, who do you got in this one? Uh, I like the Rams at home. Um, the Saints get um, Chris Olave back, but um, is, is uh, Carr still the the quarterback, or is he still? Yeah, injured? he's just been garbage. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm going to go with the Rams. Uh, I like the Rams at home. Uh, me, for narrative reasons, I have the Rams as well. Although I still think they're. I think they're playing slightly better football right now. Um, they're a little bit more of a hotter team, and it, it'll be a good good loss for 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 me for the Saints, just because that'll help the Bucks, who are right now in position of the NFC South. And if they can win out, this loss for the Saints will help them out big time. So Rams. All right. Yeah, Jake's got the Rams. Okay. All right. Next up, we got Saturday games. Two of them. Uh, first one's going to be on NBC around 3.30 or depending where you're at. It's the 8-6 and six Cincinnati Bengals traveling to face the Pittsburgh Steelers at 7-7. Seven and seven. The Steelers, by the way, in case you don't know, are having Mason Rudolph as the starting quarterback, not Trubisky. So <laughs> I don't know if you want to change your pick or if you have it set already, but oh. I'm giving you a chance. <laughs> no, I'm going to go with the Bengals. Um, I think that Jake Browning kid's been doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, and and they still got Chase. Uh, they, T. Higgins is balling out too, and Mixon as well. Um, I'm going Bengals. Yeah, Bengals. Um, I think they're also a team that you kind of maybe don't want to see in the playoffs. Like, I think they would match up well against the Chiefs. To be honest, um, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sure about their defense, but I think their offense can get things done. But yeah, I'm going with the Bengals here. Even if the Steelers had had Kenny Pickett, I just I don't know. Their just team has just been too inconsistent this year. Um, and I mean, I like their defense, but I'm not even starting them this weekend in fantasy. Yeah. I'm actually going to roll with the Bucks, even though I mean, I just look on based on the schedule, they're the better pick. But yeah, uh, Bengals. All right. And uh, next up, this game will be streaming exclusively on Peacock, folks. So if you're looking for it on NBC, you're not going to find it. It's going to be streaming exclusively there. So get your free trials and all that stuff because we got the surging red hot Buffalo Bills at eight and six traveling to face. Well, I don't know how watchable it's going to be traveling to face the Los Angeles Chargers at five and nine. I was like, wait a minute, the Chargers and the Rams are both home, but I forgot they're a day apart. So um, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll go first here. This should be a big blowout. Bills, like I said, are going to have their backs against the wall for the rest of the season. They need to win out, plus they need some help. Um, And Chargers are not going to win with that backup Easton Stick or something like that. I think that's what his name (laughs) is. Yeah, Stick. (laughs) Staley's out. Like, this team's just checked out. I mean, it's going to be a a route. Bills big. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bills. I don't have much to say. I just think it's going to be – the Bills are just going to roll all over them. Yeah. The Chargers. All right. Let's move on to Christmas Eve this Sunday, starting with the 12 o'clock games. First up, we got the 8-6 and six Indianapolis Colts traveling to face the 6-8 and eight Atlanta Falcons. Uh, quarterback update, Desmond Ritter has officially been benched for the rest of the season. It's going to be Taylor Heineke. I don't know if that changes your pick, Abe, but go ahead. Um, I, I didn't have the Falcons – I mean, I know they're playing at home. Um, I think they're still in it, right, for a playoff berth. They're kind of in the hunt. I don't know, man. They blew it against the Panthers last week. Like, they lost. Like, oh, that, was a, that was a gut, was a gut <laughs> wrench loss. Uh, I'm going to go with um, I'm gonna go with the Colts because Jonathan Taylor's back, I think. Jonathan Taylor, so, Minshew, Steichen. They're, they, and, they oh, have a... I think Pittman's going to play. Pittman, oh. Michael Michael Pittman. Uh, oh. <laughs> don't don't. He's uh, a good he's a good he's a good receiver, but um, yeah, no the Colts. I'm going with the Colts as well. I think the Falcons are looking at possibly switching head coaches, so that's going to be another vacancy there. Uh, they're definitely going to need a quarterback. If they don't draft one, they're going to go out in free agency and get one because they just have a lot of good skill players. Bijan Robinson, Kyle Pitts, like they need 
a quarterback, a good quarterback to run that offense to get back in it uh, next season. Colts are yeah. still in position for the division, possibly with Jacksonville stumbling, and we still don't know the the actual uh, prognosis of Trevor Lawrence. He's still in concussion protocol, so if the Jaguars start dropping games and the Colts or the Texans went out, watch out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're both on the Colts here. Uh, next up, unless you have anything else to say on this game. No, I'm good on this one. All right, next up, we got the 6-8 <clears throat> Green Bay Packers traveling to face the 2-12 and Carolina Panthers. Um, go ahead and go, Abe. I'm going to I'm gonna go with the Packers. Um, I think the Packers need this win because they're also in the playoff hunt as well. Um, the Panthers, they're, they're pretty much done with, um, with their season. Um, I don't really have much to say on this. I think Packers are going to steamroll on this one. Yeah, especially considering, like, I think if, if you play, like, eight times out, or nine times out of ten, like, they're probably going to beat the Bucks at home. So they're probably, you know, pissed off. And they're still fighting for a playoff spot. Panthers are basically... I mean, they don't have a first round pick, so if they lose, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> doesn't help their draft stock. Um, Green Bay here on the road should win. I know Panthers are going to feel they're, they're feeling themselves probably a little bit because they won against Atlanta last week, but I think Green Bay will play better this week. Yeah. Um. Uh, next up, we got the ten and four Detroit Lions traveling to face the Minnesota Vikings at seven and seven. Um. On the road, Detroit, they looked good last week against uh, Denver. I don't think they're going to let up anymore. I think they're actually going to just play real tight and close to the chest. Um, they should, I mean, just for, for the wager's sake, I would hope the Vikings would win. But so with my <laughs> my brain is picking the Lions, but my heart hopes that the Vikings can somehow pull it out because they're they're still in position for the playoffs, I think. Let me look real quickly to see where they're at right now. Uh, so in the NFC, we have three sides that have clinched, right? Niners, Cowboys, Eagles. And then right after that, it's the Lions at three, the Buccaneers at four, and the Vikings currently would be the sixth seed. So they would get in <laughs> if, it, if it ended today, Abe. So I'm still very much alive in this wager. So uh, we'll see. But I'm picking the Lions. Who do you got? Yeah, for my narrative, um, I'm going with the Lions as well. I, I think they're the better team, though. Uh, realistically, I think yeah, they're yeah. better than the Vikings. So I'm going to go with the Lions on this one. All right, next up is, uh, uh, I don't know how watchable this game is going to be. It's the 4-10 and Washington Commanders traveling to face the 5-9 and New York Jets. I might watch just because I don't think Sam Howell's playing anymore, and I think it's Jacoby Brissett, who yeah, I've, always Jacoby. Rooted, I've always rooted for that guy. Um I think they'll get the win here over the Jets. The Jets are just a straight up circus now. And we know Aaron Rodgers isn't coming back this season. And Zach Wilson has had a weird head injury this past weekend. And I don't, I don't know what's going on there. So I don't know who's going to be quarterback. This team has given up this year. So commanders. Yeah. Um, I was watching. So the, the Rams and the commanders, the Rams were up big, huge. And you insert Jacoby Brissett, and he was making moves with uh, McLaurin and and Curtis Samuel. Mm-hmm. Um, he was throwing these bombs out there. So yeah, and Jacoby Brissett, he's not a bad quarterback. So I'm going to go Commanders on this game. He's a viable backup. Yeah. So and and I don't like you said. I don't know who's going to start for the Jets. So yeah. All right. Next up, we got the seven and seven Seattle Seahawks with Drew Locke or Geno Smith. Who's going to play? Traveling to face. The Titans at five and nine. Uh, I think their seasons their seasons done for sure. They've been eliminated mathematically. Uh, Levis is out. I think I believe with an injury, and Derrick Henry has already stated that he's basically he's done with this team. Um, who do you yeah. got? Here? I'm going to go with Seattle. They're they're going to come rolling in on a high because they just beat the Eagles. Um, so uh, I'm going to go Seattle, and like you said, with the Titans. I mean, I think they're I think they're checked out. Yeah. I got Seattle as well. Um, I know Drew Locke's not the long-term answer, but you got to give him his props for Monday. I mean, he played well in that final series. and But not only him, like that receiver that made that – I don't know if you watched the game, but that, that receiver yeah, that made that touchdown catch, that was 
one of the best catches you'll see all season long. So I think what is it, Smith and Jigba or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And then the the guy who made the interception at the end, the way he tiptoed, having like bumped off his own player and was able to hit uh, yeah, his okay. left shoe onto the onto the turf or the turf the the grass and it's it like was... man. It's yeah, just incredible. Guy's... Like it's incredible the athleticism these guys like, you know, I know it's easy to poke and like we look at instant replays like oh how could he not be in but like this is like a high speed game man like in real time so for the, for him to get like an, an interception like that and land in bounds is incredible uh yeah seahawks rolling um i don't know what right now playoff wise they are the they would currently be the number eight seed so they'd be looking outside but hopefully some teams help them out, like the Vikings would have to lose, the Rams would have to lose. So we'll see. I mean, Seattle's very much in it. Yeah. All right, next up, we got the 8-6 and six Jacksonville Jaguars traveling to face my Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 7-7, seven and seven, the current NFC South leaders. Um, let me go on this one because it, it is my team. Again, we don't know what the status of Trevor Lawrence is. We know he's in concussion protocol right now. I'm going to assume he's not going to play because I think the NFL is just way more serious about this stuff now with everything that happened with Tua. So I think they're, they're going to, they'll probably keep him out this game for sure. And that only benefits the bucks and helps them out in their playoff chances and their hopes to win the division. So, and they're at home. If they can keep that momentum going the way they played last week in green Bay um, and the Jaguars defense is it's there. All right. So I like the bucks here in this spot. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bucks too. Um, even if Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence was playing, I think ever since that injury that happened to him, I think kind of threw him out of a funk. Uh-huh. Um, I haven't seen a lot of Calvin Ridley. And um, I think Zay Jones is banged up too. So I'm going to go with the Bucks here because of, just because of them rolling on a win. So um, I've got the Bucks, and, and they're, they're also playing at home too. So yeah. I'm going to go with the Bucks. All right, next up we got our uh, – actually, the, the Bucks and Jaguars was the start of the late games on uh, Christmas Eve and then uh, rolling on to the late 325 game or depending where you're at, folks. It's the 3-11 and Arizona Cardinals traveling to face the Chicago Bears at 5-9. and The Bears blew a pretty <laughs> good game last week that they could have won and they couldn't, they couldn't put it away. And the Cardinals, Kyler's going to continue to – play they don't want to draft the quarterback i think they're looking at if i was looking at the latest mock draft they're looking at possibly getting marvin harrison jr based on where they're at on the board um that'd be a good combination with kyler so um as far as this game goes i trust kyler over justin fields i'm going with arizona nice um i i like I like what I saw with Justin Fields. I think uh, if if uh, Mooney would have caught that pass, I don't know if you saw at the very end when he when, well, the when Fields, yeah, he tossed that up and then it was right there. And I, I think Mooney couldn't grasp on it, and so anyway, it ended up being picked off. But 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 it shouldn't um, have had to come to that. Weren't they up like seventeen to three on uh, who, think, who, did they, who did they play? Um, I think it was. Uh, let me see. Yeah, look that the up real Bears. quick because it was like. It was like, oh man, the Bears are going to beat this team. The and Browns, think, the, the Browns. Browns. There we go. And Joe yeah. Flacco, they got Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco, man. So I'm going to go with the Bears here. Um, I, I think they might, they might edge out here. Uh, Kyler, he's yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I mean, he's he's been doing decent, but um, he's he's throwing picks, and I think he's not in his Kyler Murray form for this mm-hmm. year. So I'm going to go with the Bears. All right. Uh, next up, it's uh. A tale of uh, look in the mirror, the exact same uh, team <laughs> game. It's the ten and four Dallas Cowboys <laughs> traveling to face the Miami Dolphins at ten and four. Something's got to give in this game. I need to hear your thoughts first, day before I, I get yeah. Let, let me let me let me let me get on this. This is because this is my team here, but um, that the win. I mean, watching them play against the Bills was just was just. I don't know, man. It was it was disappointing. Um, I saw a lot of things. Um, I, like I told you, I told you earlier that this is, you know, I saw the real deck again. Here it is. And now I'm just like, shit, like, 
I'm out of that days. Um, Tyreek Hill's coming back. They've got Waddle. It, it, it feels like too much. Um, it's kind of like the Niners, Robert, if you want to, if you want to put it in that, you know, you know uh, term or whatever, but kind of too much offense, you know, now that you have Terry Kill back, you've got Mostert at the running back. Um, he's no James Cook. I think they to utilize him. Yeah, but he's, he's no James Cook, but right, he can right. still hurt you. He can still hurt you in the passing game as well. Um, <clears throat> Cowboys have some injuries going on. Like I said, I don't like what I see. And, and this is where the Cowboys are going to have to win me again. And they're going to have to beat the Dolphins and, and so on going for the rest of the season. But until then, I'm I'm going with the Dolphins. Okay. Um, Don't you do it, Robert. Don't you do it. <laughs> Cowboys got humiliated. Um, and my instinct is to be like, teams that usually get humiliated – they play a lot better the next week. But as I posted on Facebook for the audience that don't follow me on there, it's like every, every time I want to give the Cowboys credit, they expose themselves for the frauds that they are. And everybody that gives me shit for never giving the Cowboys credit. And then when they do, they they show their ass and they're exactly what I think they are. So I, I think if the Dolphins can establish the run game with Mostert and it'll open everything up with Tyreek and Waddle, I think the the Dolphins can A, take time of possession and also B, put up more points than the Cowboys just because I think the red zone's still like an issue for the Cowboys for, for the most it part, is. no? So yeah, I, I trust the Dolphins in the red zone more than the Cowboys. And they're also at home. So I'll give the Dolphins the edge over that for that. And, and I'll pick them as well. And I don't have to tell you who Jake picked. Oh, yeah. Well, no, of course. Never have to tell us. <laughs> and then the final game on Christmas Eve, uh, ugh, my uh, my New England Patriots three and eleven, traveling to face Sean Payton and the you know freaking relationship with him and Payton yelling at each other. The five and se- the seven and seven Broncos who are still in it. Um, let me go first. Um, I mean, we saw Denver kind of unravel last week with. You know, you saw the you saw the video, right? Of Peyton just cussing I, out. I saw awesome. it. Yeah, it made me laugh. I'm not gonna lie. And, and Denver was playing pretty decent and a little, little bit of of a hot streak. Was it fool's gold, possibly? Um, yeah. But they're still they could still win out. I think their their next three games here are pretty winnable, and especially against the Patriots, who are you know probably the second worst team in the league behind the Panthers. Um, so they could they could definitely they're definitely going to win this one I know that I I mean the Patriots I know they were kind of a little bit in it with the Chiefs but the Chiefs have their own problems which is why right. New England kind of hung around for a little bit uh, but I think Denver will easily put them away here at home my Patriots and I'm already looking down the road for the draft for them and uh, I'm excited for the future of this team but right now I'm living in the present and it's it's bleak so. Can 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 you can you imagine Robert had y'all drafted or Belichick drafted well in 2019? Could have had a Debo Samuel or or um, I believe it was DK Metcalf, and mm. y'all ended up getting to kill Henry. Mm. <laughs> I mean the what ifs, but yeah. um, and that was still I can't Brady I can't era. I can't play that game so <laughs> well. Well, that was still with Brady on there, and it doesn't matter. I guess they felt like they can get anybody, and you know, well, it doesn't matter true, because but... they, they they won the Super Bowl. Like I don't know how many times. So, uh, yeah, you see, you yeah, know, you, yeah. You, I got my yeah, titles. Yeah, but nah, it doesn't matter by fucking titles, huh? Uh, do you what do you mean it doesn't matter? Huh? Why why do why do we do this? Why do we cheer oh. the teams that we cheer because we want them to win it all? Yeah. Do and I've won MVPs? it all seven times. Do you have do you have MVPs? Nobody remembers no. MVPs. Huh? Freaking Kurt Warner huh? was an MVP. Nobody remembers that. Ah, uh, that fucking fool guy's <laughs> fuck out of here with that guy. Freaking I'm just saying, we cheer our everyone that says cha- the people that say championships don't matter are either fans of losers or they're losers themselves because the goal in this game is to win and to win championships. I don't care about MVPs, I don't care about Pro Bowl Volts or whatever, even though it's all flag football now. I care about who's hoisting the trophy at the end. And brother, I've hoisted it seven times in my fandom career. 
That's why they call me the greatest fan of all time. Uh, fuck out of here. Anyway. <laughs> all right, moving on. To Chris. I'm gonna hold on, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Broncos. Oh I'm yeah, yeah sorry. Broncos. Yeah, get your pick. yeah. I'm I'm going with the Broncos. Patriots. Yeah, they're they're done for. So no, I don't. Why, why don't you say. go on a limb? Go for the Patriots. You you. Nah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Nah, you you want me to? You want me to? Because, no, I'm yeah, just saying. Like you you you're 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 in a very. Uh, substantial lead right now so why why not take a chance and go for that now uh, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna blow you i'm gonna blow you're, you're, i'm gonna blow you out the water you're proving me right you're playing it safe it's okay uh, i'm not i'm not playing it safe i'm playing it I'm right exposing you just, in re- i'm exposing is, you in this real is, audio this time. is me this is me this is me winning that's what nah. it is robert yeah, yeah. Fine. okay all right let's move on to christmas day folks we got three games going on i'll be at work most of the day, so I'll probably only get to catch the final game. Um, but first up, we got the this one's going to be on CBS and Nickelodeon <laughs> at noon. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be the six and eight Las Vegas Raiders coming off the biggest win of their careers, uh, traveling to face the Kansas City Chiefs at nine and five. Um, let me go first here, and I'm, I'm going to go based on narrative, okay? Because I want the Raiders to ride this momentum. The Chiefs are wailing. This is the, the year to get them because I think they'll figure it out in, in free agency in the offseason. I think they'll figure it out and they'll get back to what they were. But this season, this is the season to catch them and, and you know, kind of send them packing. And I think Mahomes is going to end up playing like on the road. I mean, I actually them losing would help the Broncos out. So I'm kind of hoping that they, uh, yeah, I'm going to pick the Raiders. Okay. Look, I don't think I'm going to win in this standings uh, season this year, so <laughs> I want to go on a limb because I'm not a coward. I, I have I have some cojones. Uh, let's see what Antonio Pierce can get out of this roster. I know they're going into Arrowhead, and the Chiefs have been struggling. I don't know. I I, I want to believe that the Raiders can pull this off, so I'm going to go for them. But go ahead, play it safe, Abe. I'm going to go with the Chiefs on coward, this game. Coward. I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. We're gonna we're gonna go back to seeing Devontae Adams slamming his helmet back on the sidelines, frustrated because he can't get the ball, or the ball's not getting to him because of Aiden O'Connell. Um, Raiders are gonna come down from cloud nine because they played a Fugaz team in the, in the Chargers, and you're playing Mahomes now. That defense is not what their defense is not gonna do to Mahomes like what they did to that stick guy. So. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. I'm going to win the standings this year, finally. And I'm going to rub <laughs> it in your face. And I'm going to get that Super Bowl rematch in fantasy. And I'm going to rub that in your face. We'll see. Yeah, we will I got see. Chiefs. I got Chiefs. All right. Next up, we got the <clears throat> mid-afternoon game. It's 3.30. It's going to be on Fox. It's the 5-9 and nine New York Giants traveling to face the uh, ten and four Philadelphia Eagles on a three game losing streak. Um, who do you got, Abe? Um, I'm gonna go with my Eagles. Uh, Your Eagles playing at my Eagles because I got them winning the division. They're gonna win it either either way. Um, they're playing the Giants. I think that Tommy DeVito kid finally came down to earth. Um, and and. That that defense is going to you know handle him as well, and I think Bradbury's probably not going to get burned. Might be able to get some picks on here. Um, I like the Eagles at home. I think they're going to bounce back because they've been on that losing streak. So I'm going to go with the Eagles. Um, Eagles dominated all of Monday night. They just happened to have a team make a a play. So I'm not worried about the Eagles. I mean, if it's against the Niners in the playoffs, yeah, they probably don't have a chance. But anybody else, like, like definitely they'll they'll be in it. And they'll be in this game and the final games remaining in their quest to repeat as division champs. So they will win here. They're, I think they're favored by like, I think it's like 12 and a half, the, the spread <laughs> right now. Um, I mean, the, Vegas is begging you to take the, the Giants here. Um, but no, the Eagles should definitely bounce back big after this three game skid. But I don't know. Hopefully, the uh, Jalen Hurts saying, like that the team wasn't committed enough is I hope hopefully that resonates in a positive way and not like negative and impacts the uh, morale in the locker room because I mean, I know Hertz was sick. So maybe some of it was just, he was out of it. Um, yeah. But 
yeah, I, I expect them to, to bounce back for sure. All right, folks, it's now time for our games of the week. So let's go back for Abe's game, which is going to be on Sunday on Christmas Eve. It's the 9-5 and five Cleveland Browns traveling to face the 8-6 and six Houston Texans. And the Texans are going to be without C.J. Stroud. So go ahead, Abe, tell us about this game. Why is it your game of the week? Yeah, my game of the week because of the fact that in the very beginning of the season, I said the Texans would be a surprise team, and they've been surprising, have they not? Correct. Um, I think they can continue. I know C.J. Stroud's going to be out this game again because of the confession protocol. Yeah. Um, but I think because of where they're at with this team, um, I think it's going to be enough. Um, the defense is is decent. I like Joe Flacco. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great that he's back. He's playing, and he's been looking good the past two weeks. Um, but – the Texans, it's not a you know, it's not NRG Stadium anymore, right? It's a or is it NRG? No, that's what, that's what it's called. It's, yeah, it's, it's NRG, right? Um, it can get loud there, so I'm gonna. I still want to. I still want to stay on the wagon here for the Texans, and I think that because they're still playing for playoff contention, they're in the hunt still. So um, I think they have what it takes. If the Bears almost took the Browns out, I think that the Texans are a little bit better of a team than the Bears. Mm-hmm. So I think the Texans can take care of them at home. Well, is that because Fields was able to run around on that defense? Like are, this defense against Case Keenum? I, I don't know. I, yeah. I kind of like the Browns in this spot, even though I do want the Texans to to win and I want them to get into the tournament um, just from a personal standpoint. But I don't know. The Browns have been playing decent. Flacco's been good enough to – you know, manage the game and let the defense do its thing. And I think they'll they'll have their way with Case Keenum. If it were Stroud, it'd be a different story, but I'm going to go with the Browns here. I, I still got to write the Texans, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. Okay. And finally, it's the final game of Week 16. It's going to be the Monday Nighter on Christmas night. And that is going to be – give me a second here, sorry. Just need to see who was the visiting team. It's going to be the eleven and three, and this is my game of the week. It's the eleven and three Baltimore Ravens traveling to face the San Francisco 49ers, also at eleven and three. Uh, both of these teams, the the number one seeds in their co- respective conferences, possible Super Bowl preview. If you're a conspiracy theorist, some people have put out there. I don't know if you've read into this one, Abe. The uh, the colors of the Super Bowl logo, the last two have matched the teams that ended up playing. So like Super Bowl 56 was like a blendish of like yellow and orange. So it was the Rams and the Bengals. And the Bengals. And then, and then last year it was a combination of red and green and it was the Eagles and the Chiefs. And for the Super Bowl this year, the colors are a blend of purple and red. So people are already <laughs> saying like, oh, is it going to be the the Ravens and the Niners in the Super Bowl again? Um but all that aside, that's just a fun thing to talk about. But I don't believe in any of that stuff. Um, it's just a, those are just coincidences, I think. Um, really, really good matchup here. The the point spread is five and a half, so Vegas is begging you to take Baltimore, even even though San Francisco's favored. But I think I think San Francisco here is just is too good of a roster. I think Baltimore will give them a game like really early. But then, like you mentioned, how they like handled Seattle, where it was close early, and then they just broke out, and it ended yeah. up being like I can see this being like a thirty-five to twenty game or something like that, where they just it's going to be Baltimore playing catch up towards the end, where they'll make it kind of close, but you'll know by like the start of the third quarter, maybe midway, it's like man, Niners are just going to run away with this. So I got the Niners here, but. I also wouldn't be shocked if the Ravens won. So we, we talked about this earlier that this is this is, was a game you know that we needed to look out for to to kind of keep Lamar Jackson in that MVP you know um, number one spot right or to win it mm-hmm. and and this is a good matchup to where this this is where it's going to tell us like where he's at or you know where we're at on our pick. Um, I, I don't forget who's on defense for the Ravens, Robert. Who? Uh, I don't know. Jadavian Clowney's on there. 
And heard I his think name. We've, is, heard his, we've heard his name uh, once. No, 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 no. We've heard it more than once. Oh, we've he's, he's all once. of a sudden going to get to Brock Purdy? Get out of here. He's going to give him some – he's going to hurry him. He's going <laughs> to he's gonna get some prayers in there. I, I think – honestly, I think this game could be – I don't know if you remember when the Ravens played the Lions and the Ravens just dominated and the Lions couldn't you even are, get past the, you, the you 50. Are, you are huh? such a homer for this guy in the way no, that Jake is a homer no, for the no, Cowboys. No, 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 it's no, just Robert. as bad. Robert, a bad Robert, look for you. The the, Ra- the Ravens are not a bad team. They're eleven and three for um, a reason. Yeah, team. We're we're talking about okay. individual. Yes, but it, he can he can bring a presence. He's going to bring some pressure, and I don't think they're going to play from behind. I think that this is going to be a back and forth kind of game. And what like lead going to change? Leads are going to change. Yeah, and and I think it's going to come down to the fourth quarter. Six minutes to go in the game, and who has the ball at that time? They're going to control the clock. Um, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. It's going to be maybe a shootout, maybe because you're, you're you know, telling these, me these... Uh, you're telling me Baltimore's weapons match up with San Francisco's to keep it like close and back and forth. I I think Lamar is that good to where he can keep them close. I don't think he's going to fall behind. Um, I could be wrong. I mean, I've been proven wrong before. That being said, I'm going to take the Ravens. Um, if I'm uh if I'm the Niners defense, I have a spy on Lamar the whole time, because you know he's gonna like that's that's basically what it's gonna come down to. If he can't wanna... get it go, if he can't get it going with his legs, and you know the defense is able to put a lid on that, because I don't think OBJ and whoever else he's got like is not, it, they're not good enough against his defense. I don't think. And you want you want to you want to wager on this? What do you want? And be creative. Stop giving me the same shit. Oh, I mean, what do you what do you want, Robert? Shit. Let me see. Let's do a Funko Pop. A Funko? Yeah, we yeah. can do that. I- I'm missing a Brady one, so and I'll get you a Lamar one. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Let me write that down. So I will get you a Lamar Funko if the Ravens win. You're gonna get me. I'm missing the Tom Brady with the. Uh, I think it's the Super Bowl Fifty Three cap on. I think they have it on the Funko website. And I'll get you the Lamar. That's the wager. Robert. We're set? Yeah, wager is... uh... Funko. Uh, Funko. Niners, Ravens. My game of the week. There we go. I picked the Niners, so who did you uh, – did we get your pick I picked already? the Ravens. Yeah, I Ravens? got the Ravens. Okay. All right. All right, well, that's week 16, folks. Um, I think we discussed everything that we need to for this week, uh, unless you got any closing statements. Uh, no, I don't really have uh, much. I think now everything is just kind of coming to pieces. For it's all just about who's – like, yeah. um, I mentioned uh, – like for sure, who's clinched the playoffs already? Like Baltimore is already in for sure on the right. AFC side of things, and then the NFC. It's the Niners, Cowboys, Eagles are all in the playoffs right now, like officially. Right. So for them, it's just going to depend on ranking. Uh, everybody else is still like vying for position, so it's going to be an interesting last couple of weeks, especially <clears throat> like on the AFC side. A lot of these teams are eight and six, and and then on the uh, NFC side of things, a couple of seven and sevens, and six and eight so there's a it's gonna come down to the wire usually by now yeah. like you have like a bunch of teams that separate right it's just a weird year. yeah it, it actually is but i mean that's what that's what makes the nfl interesting you know to watch because you just you just don't know what's gonna happen you don't expect it like in the nba you know it's just like oh you i, it, I don't even i don't even watch that anymore nba like i I don't even know what that in season. I think well, uh, real quick. I don't. Somebody was saying I can't remember what legend player or legendary player said that it it was like that the Lakers should be ashamed for for like like hanging the banner for that in season tournament. I don't even know what that is. What wasn't it like Ron about? Harper that said that? Oh yeah, I think it was Ron Harper. Yeah, he said like that the Lakers should be ashamed for hanging that banner. I don't even know what the what the whole point of that in-season tournament is, like, I don't know what that's It about. was to get more, how do you call it, like, um, Adam Silver wanted to get a hold on the whole, 
what is it that the Popovich likes to do, like the resting players and all that stuff? Oh, and right. Yeah. It was a way to get the players motivated to play like all these. I mean, I don't want to say they're meaningless games, but it's a long season. So yeah. and there, there was incentive. I think the players want money like so. Oh, I, I think the NBA is just a shit show now. And I mean, uh, I don't know. It is what it is. But back to the NFL, that, that's why I like watching it. That's why, you know, it, it's it's always fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to do the plug in the plugs real quick. Yeah. And then and then we can do that. Um, our email is, is the two minute drive podcast. And that's the number two T.W.O. spelled out minute drive podcast at outlook.com. We, we need some love on there, man. I think, uh, uh, we only had a few people write us on there, so uh, show us some love. Uh, All right, it's season X- one. Yeah, and on the X account, it's at U R Roughness Pod. It's the letter U and then Roughness Pod. And then, of course, Robert's handling the Facebook account. It's the Two Minute Drive Podcast, and Jake's running the Instagram. Um, next year, hopefully, we have you know a, more of a turnout. I mean, this year was great for our first season spinning yeah. off with the spinoff show mm-hmm. with a special guest, huge, uh, a shout out to them who, who all joined the show and, and, and we look forward to having them on there uh, soon or, or even next year, but uh, Robert will get the logo finished out and then hopefully have some merch made and, and we'll merch, can... uh, we want to get theme music as well. We'll yeah. get a whole yeah. intro. I, th- I forgot. I think it was Steven that was like, Hey, we don't have an intro for this. Like now nah, we're, yeah. we're still in the pilot season. So we're going to, we're getting out all the kinks next next season we'll we'll have a more polished show and all that stuff we'll have intro music outro music um, i know uh i know with i i keep telling you like at my work you know the, they keep saying that you and i mesh really well so next year and in, in year two of this uh pot show i kind of want to you know dig in your head more you know as far yeah. as like your thoughts uh, i want to do more you know, more analysis, deep analysis. And, you know, and like I said, like you said, this is just starting up. This is year one. This is people to get a taste of what's to come. And uh, so, I mean, it, it's been great. I mean, we're still doing it. And um, other than that, Robert, um, I don't have much to say. I mean, uh, happy uh, or Merry Christmas uh, yeah. from us here at, at the Two Minute Drive podcast. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone and their family. Be safe. Uh, if you're out doing Christmas parties this weekend, be safe. Uh, stay in and take an Uber. If you're traveling, uh, be safe too. Yeah, be be safe. And uh, from all of us here from Palace Productions, uh, Merry Christmas, and and we'll see you all next week. Yeah, Merry Christmas, guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>